Unit 2, Segment 4, we continue with renewable energy resources. So this is going to be hydroelectric and it's going to be tidal. This is a short one. So if we can just get a turbine to turn, then we can connect that to a generator and we can generate electricity. So the two I'm going to show you next are going to just directly turn a turbine. It will use kinetic energy from moving water to generate the electricity. Both of these two, hydroelectric and tidal, do that. You can see in the picture you have, a, this is a dam. This big structure in the middle is a big fat dam. And you stick it in a river and it's going to cause a backlog lake to generate behind it. So you have a lake, the level rises, right? The velocity slows in the lake, the level rises up. And then the dam allows only a controlled amount to go through and it's actually dropping down because of gravity. So it drops down through and where's my cursor? Drops down through. Right here's the turbine. The turbine fans around and is connected to a generator and it generates the electricity through the power lines that, that come out of it. And then it flows out into the stream and away it goes. So it just has a constant supply of potential energy here behind the dam. Super efficient. Um, it, it doesn't, because it doesn't have so many different conversions, energy conversions like the um, fossil fuels do and the biomass and the um, uranium, it doesn't turn water to steam, it doesn't have that step in the, process, in the, the conversions. So it's just a direct, it turns the generator turns a turbine which turns a generator and then it you've got electricity there's no steam involved super efficient okay now a big pro to using hydroelectric power is that you are not burning any fuels there's no emissions whatsoever there's no pumps there's nothing once the dam is built of course it's expensive to build but once it's built the expense is very low um, it does control floods because you have backlogged. You can control how much water goes through. So if you have a, a lot of rain in an area, you can just simply let more water through. And actually, you get more electricity when you do that anyways. So you have more control over the water flow, which is a nice thing to have. Canada, Brazil, Norway, and Venezuela actually produce more than half of their electricity using hydropower. And there are areas in the United States that we do it too. But you do have to be located near a major river so this is a one of the cons um, your location is pretty limiting you have to be near major rivers um, in order for the dam to function well for you you when you put a dam into a river you do change the habitat you change it from a river now to a lake you also interrupt the flow so any migrating fish that have to migrate upstream to mate they're not going to be able to make it past the dam, right? Sometimes um, the engineers will orchestrate a pathway that the fish can take actually to go upstream, but, but most of them don't. And so those fish then are limited and their population numbers can go down. When you create a lake behind the dam, the velocity of the water in a lake is much slower, okay? So therefore it can't carry sediments and nutrients very well. So basically when that river upstream hits the lake, it drops any sediments and nutrients that it was carrying. It drops them into the lake. Okay, that lake then get, builds up sediment and oftentimes it needs to be dredged. And if those sediments are contaminated, as in the case of the Kalamazoo River and the, um, the dams that are along that, you have very contaminated sediments that are that are found in those lakes. So uh, because it backlogs and creates lakes, floods on farmland are going to be an issue when that dam is first put into place because like I said you go from a river to a lake and that's a lot more area. Um, like I said with the sediments, the, if they're polluted it will trap that. It's very costly to build a dam um, because the because of the lake creation, it forces people that lived along the river to relocate because their 
property could be now underwater in the lake. <laughs> and then, of course, you are limited to locations that have moving water in order to benefit from the hydroelectric power. Okay, next on this um, video clip is tidal, which is similar to hydroelectric, only we're not talking a river, we're actually talking the tides. We mentioned tides as one of the main source, one of the three main sources of energy for our planet. So we know that it's not tides are not waves. It's literally the level of the water, of the oceans rising and then going down, and it's due to the pull of the moon and the Earth on each other. So when we have high tide, and you can see in this image up here, when we have high tide, the sea rises and water goes through in this way. Estuaries are areas where the fresh water and salt water mix meet. Anyways, it flows into the estuary and there's a little turbine right there that's connected to a generator. If we can just turn that turbine, then we can, there's energy in moving water, a lot of it. And so if we just install a few of these turbines and generators in areas where there's um, high and low tides, then we can get that energy. So when then it goes to low tide, there's an overall force outward. So the water will come out and it will turn the turbine and in the process of doing that. So you can build a dam across a bay or a tidal river. High tide you have water moving in, it turns the turbine. Low tide you have water moving out and it turns the turbine. So the best location is where the difference in the height between the high and low tides are the highest, obviously. Then you have the greatest gravitational um, potential energy. The pros and cons are very similar to the hydropower, but you are even more limited in a tidal location. The conditions have to be right and you do alter the habitats when you do this as well. And that is it. So we're going to stop. This was a quick one.